the sound test room. Hello and welcome to The Sound Test Room. My name is Jakob Hack. I'm your host and you're watching The Hack Attack Show. In this episode, I am going to show you how I go about recording my vocals and what's going on on the iPad for the content that I create, including Hack Attack Show, Minute Patches, live performances, quick clips and video logs. Now, there are multiple ways of actually capturing audio for making tutorials and videos. I've only tried a few because I do not own an external sound card. But what I do own is an IK Multimedia iRig Mic HD. And I use that a lot, a lot, a lot. Now, this tutorial is for those of you that want to be able to actually produce shows, tutorials and other kinds of content only using iDevices. This is an iPad mini first generation non-retina. It's got the same hardware specs as an iPad 2, which means that it can get very low on RAM memory. The iPhone is an iPhone 5, not an S or C or anything like that, just an iPhone 5 and it's running iOS 7.1.2, same with the iPad. Now, right now, I am capturing my voice and the video at the same time. The IK Multimedia iRig Mic HD actually comes with a lightning connector cable, awesomely supported by the camera on my iPhone 5. So I simply plug my iRig Mic HD into the iPhone 5 and then I open up the camera app, I go to video and my iRig Mic lights up. Okay, so that's how I'm recording my vocals right now. It's being captured with the video. Now, let's say I want to make a tutorial about figure. Figure supports in-app audio. This is what I do. I use AudioShare a lot. A lot. So let's go to AudioShare. We're gonna set up to record figure. Press the microphone button down here and this audio recording window will pop up. As you can see, audio is coming into it right now. That's because the iPad has a built-in microphone behind the camera, and right now it's routed into audio share. Press the plus sign and go down and look for figure. Load up figure. It's now prepped for recording audio. But what about syncing? How do I sync this to my video when I'm done? In Hollywood, you use clappers to actually show it visually on screen and you get a loud noise with it so you can actually see it in the waveform where to sync your audio. Let's turn on record here. Go into figure. Let's flip it to this side. I simply turn up the headphone volume because right now I have my headphones plugged in to the iPad. Now, if you start removing and plugging in stuff when you've set up everything inside AudioShare, you can sometimes break the connection and you'll have to restart all the apps and set up everything from scratch again. So just keep that in mind. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the headphone to get a sync point. Visually on the video, I'll see as soon as I put down my fingers on the video, but I also want it to show visually in the audio when I'm using Pinnacle Studio to sync my audio because that's what I'm using. It supports three audio tracks, which is very important because I handle a lot, a lot, a lot of audio a lot of the time. Turn up the volume to the highest setting, move the headphones closely to the microphone and simply play a snare. I'm gonna press stop here and it's gonna load up the audio. As you can see, we have recorded more than we need. We only need this bit here with the snares. So simply press tool, trim fade, and let's trim it down a bit. If you long press, it will zoom in and you can actually go in closer. When you are done, press save. And there you have the snare sounds. Now you simply need to move this to the iPhone if you're gonna edit on that one. Unless you want to edit stuff on your iPad, then you actually have to move the video down to the iPad. And the simplest way of doing that is using AirDrop. Let's say for some reasons you can't plug in something to your iPhone to record your vocals with. Uh, you don't have an iRig mic. You're using an external sound card, maybe like an Apogee or something. I don't know if that can be connected to the iPhone. Maybe you can tell me that, Brady. Because I actually got a question from Brady Bean, an excellent figure musician who wants to start making figure tutorials. And he asked me on how to actually set up his audio for doing this. So Brady, this is for you. 
And seriously, you should go check out Brady Bean's music. It's awesome. awesome. Now, I am going to show you the second way of doing this. Let's say we still want to do a figure tutorial, but we want to record our audio from the vocals, me talking, and the audio from the app you want to display at the same time on the iPad. Then I use two apps. This is Audio Mastering by Igor Vasiliev. I use this app a lot. <laughs> Trust me, I've used it extensively for all of my audio. I process stuff all the time. And as you can see, I'm getting audio in. That's because I have my iRig mic plugged into the iPad. And as soon as I turn on, you can see that it lights up red here. Maybe it's hard to see, but it's red right there. It's red. It says input. As soon as I press that button, the input is on, the microphone is active and I can start record. And that's exactly what I'm doing right now. I am recording the audio. Now the next thing I'm going to do is go out of audio mastering and open up audio share. I'm going to do the same thing again. Open up the microphone and choose figure in the input slot. I am then going to turn on the recording for figure, go into figure. Let's flip it like that. Turn up the volume for the headphones because I still have them plugged into the output of the iPad. And I'm going to move my headphones to the built-in microphone on the iPhone 5 and then play a sound. Back into audio share, I'm going to press stop. And now I have trimmed the audio of this NAS that I just played. I am also going to stop the recording for audio mastering. Okay, so I just went into audio mastering and pressed stop. And here you can see the recorded audio. The advantage of actually recording audio like this is that you can actually process the audio when you're done. Now I can go into doing some mastering on my vocals to make it sound really, really good. And then export that and I can send it to my iPhone 5 using AirDrop. So right here I have my iPhone 5 and my iPad mini and to turn on airdrop you simply swipe up like that and you get this menu. Make sure that the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth is lit just like this and now you're ready for airdrop. So here I have audio share and I want to send the trimmed snare file to my iPhone. I press this button right here and I get this window. I press the airdrop and this can take quite a while this icon will pop up and it will show Jakob's iPhone uh, it will probably show your own iPhone or whatever device you're sending it to because you can do this in both directions I'm gonna press this one it's gonna say it's waiting and then it's gonna pop up and prompt me on the iPhone to actually receive a file and right here a prompt comes up I'm gonna clear it and then it's gonna start sending it. Now the file was quite small, so sending it didn't take that much time. But if you have like 10 minutes of audio, you're gonna to have to sit there and wait for it to actually send the file. It's gonna prompt me to open it in a few apps. And right now I want to open it in audio share because I like collecting all my files in one place and then sending it to others. But as you can see here, I also have the choice of sending it directly to Pinnacle Studio for phone because I have Pinnacle Studio on the iPhone. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna to send it to audio share and there you go i'm gonna look for it and it's right here the figure trim one and if i want to use that in pinnacle studio i simply press this button and i go to pinnacle studio and open it in there pinnacle studio will tell me that a new media file has been added to find that file press the plus sign make a new project the first time you send something to it and you open up a new project it's gonna open up the file that you just sent to it so here you can see it you can grab that and pull it out and place it in one of the three audio tracks inside Pinnacle Studio if you press the note sign up here I'm gonna go back this is the audio menu you have songs artists albums playlists and effect and when sending audio from other apps into Pinnacle Studio then they get placed inside the playlist user audio and here you can find it. And right here you can see the trimmed figure track that we sent to it. All right, I wanted to show you how 
painstakingly slow this uh, kind of work can get due to hardware limitations. Memory is really important. The less memory you have, the less space you have for files being active. This complete video file is only about six minutes long, but when you start cutting it up, the, the program has to store where a clip is beginning and where it where it's ending you know and that all of that information gets stored into the ram which is active memory so the less you have the more jiggy the app is going to work so right now i've reached an impasse you could say now this is the point of when stuff is starting to go slowly i'm also editing at the same time i have an audio file of my vocals that i have to sync with the video so i have to cut two files and move two files that wave file also has to be stored in the memory and then memory gets full and when that happens the program runs slowly so what i'm gonna do right now is i'm gonna do some editing so i'm gonna remove this bit here remove it and you can see that and it looks like it's going fast but look at this look at this look at this yeah yeah going slow okay so now we can move again and now i'm going to re remove the video bit so you see that and it's done but you actually have to wait a bit yeah okay like that and now i'm going to move this file back uh, to so it's synced with the video and look at this the dangerous thing with this is if you keep on going from here it can crash and if it crashes you have the uh, it has the ability to crash your stuff really really hard it doesn't happen that often actually it's absolutely rare but it does happen and i did a rant video some time ago about that when the memory gets full it's full you, you can't keep on jolting stuff into a box when it's full and hope that nothing will break my advice to you when the app is running like this press the home button close off the project and you have two options now apple kind of closed off a door for developers some time ago so i don't know if there are apps like this but i have this old app it's not available on the app store anymore it actually cleans your memory press quick refresh as you can see it was using 83 percent of my memory and that's quite a lot and now it's cleaning the memory so it's shutting off stuff and it's removing all of the video and audio that was in the active memory and it's cleaning it and now you can see even after cleaning it that's like 351 megabytes it actually just removed from the ram so after cleaning it you can see i have 48 percent that's half of my memory left and when going into pinnacle studio now it should run more smoothly the other option you have if you can't download a memory clearing app then shut down your phone and restart everything now you can see how something that would normally take me maybe half an hour to do could take me one or two hours just because of you know stuff like this and that's due to hardware limitations uh, if you want to make videos and stuff on your iphones and ipads then this is something you're gonna have to deal with that's my advice to you deal with it deal with it you can always go to the computers and start doing it like that but i can tell you that actually exporting finished videos on an iPhone is really, really quick compared to a computer. So try it out. There you go. As usual, Doug Woods, Colin Sweeney and me at thesoundtestroom.com wishes you a very productive week. Yeah, yeah.